All right. Okay, excellent. Right. Good morning. Happy Friday, real quick. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks. Welcome to the uh, um, ATARC Identity Management uh, Working Group. And we're today, first off on the agenda, we're going to get a presentation from Improve ID and Ubico uh, for the FIDO2 lab. Take it away. All right, good morning. My name is Arturo Peach, Technical Sales Manager for Improve ID. Improve ID is a software company with over two decades of digital identity management experience, such as PIV, CAC, FIDO2, and passwordless authentication and federation. Today in this lab, we will be demonstrating the derived FIDO2 credential issuance, lifecycle management, and authentication. I'm joined by our subject matter expert, Gurpreet Mains, and I'm also happy to have David Maples, Senior Solutions Architect from Ubico with us. We appreciate the opportunity. I'll let uh, Gurpreet take it from here. I'm uh, sure, thanks, Arthur. Um, before I take it, uh, David, do you want to uh, just give a quick introduction? Hey there, I'm David Maples, Senior Solution Architect here at Ubico, uh, manufacturer and producer of the YubiKey. Um, I believe that everybody here has been exposed to the YubiKey at one point or time. Uh, so I'd like to shift focus to the Improve ID solution. Uh, thanks, David. Um, yeah, so we're not gonna do any marketing. Um, it's gonna be mainly focused around the demonstration um, and capabilities of uh, being able to do drive FIDO credentials. Um, and so what I would ask is I'm gonna take probably about 10 minutes or so um, to go through the demonstration um, and then open it up for everybody to be able to ask questions. Um, if we have to, you know, toggle back and forth, we'll, uh, we'll do that. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of just how the demo is set up. So there is a, um, you know, PIV card issuer, uh, I'm calling it, for example, CMS, uh, which uh, is talking to an issuing CA, uh, just like if you take the example of like a US access and you have a, a FPGI um, that it publishes CRL. Uh, and on this system, you'll see a uh, name gem operator, which is acting as the, uh, you know, a operator, security officer, and then uh, Mark Wahlberg is the user that has a PIV card that will get a FIDO drive credential uh, from the second system, which is the uh, uh, federal, uh, you know, the, the uh, drive uh, FIDO credential. Um, so that's gonna be the uh, DFC CMS. Um, and there's a Clara on that as the operator. So, you know, she'll perform some lifecycle operations. Now there's a lot of other things in behind the system that I'm not gonna cover or go over because it's kind of the, the uh, out of scope is that there is, you know, IDP back there. There's the authentication service, the federation, uh, single sign on HSM, et cetera. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that it's simplified for everyone on the call to understand the use case of the, um, you know, the, the, the FIDO credential um, in this case. And, and also you'll notice that this is very similar to the PIV drive, which is the same workflows can actually do that as well. Um, so like I said, if we have any questions, we can always just sort of come back to this. Um, there are policies that are configured on the back uh, on the server. Um, and instead of toggling back and forth, I just kind of put those screens here that there's a policy for checking a um, CRL um, and that can be defined by uh, the issuer or, or agency to be anything. It could be minutes to hours, to days, to weeks. Uh, it's a configurable option. Uh, and there's also a policy that is checking with the CMS, now this could be any CMS, by the way, right? Uh, depending on what is that integration with that CMS, it could be through a standard protocol uh, like OpenID Connect or Skim, or it could be an API connection like REST API uh, or SOAP that the user status of the PIV card is being checked and there's a policy to that, that is it, you know, daily basis, weekly basis. Uh, it all depends on what is the, the performance threshold. So it's all configurable. 
Um, now, there's also uh, uh, in the uh, DFC um, CMS, you have to onboard the user, right? Um, to be able to manage the user and manage the devices and the credentials they have, whether, you know, in this case, we're talking about FIDO. Um, and so what happens is when the user will authenticate, there's information and based on configuration, this could be from the certificate, it could be from the card, or it could be from the issuing CMS that attributes come um, to be able to create that uh, user in the system. <clears throat> and then there's approval process, which is here, it's I kind of set it to automation, is that if you belong to this group, uh, substitute customer ID with uh, a contractor or uh, government employee. Um, uh, so um, I just put it as a, as a customer ID because I knew this was going to be uh, made available on, on YouTube. So, so what happens is when if the user comes in and belongs to this group, then they're being approved automatically, but there is a process where you can say, okay, the user has to be approved by a operator before they can get their FIDO credential. And then what kind of credentials are they getting, right? Are they getting a, a drive PIV card or a U drive PIV YubiKey or they're getting a FIDO credential? So that's another configuration that's set up in the system. So the first demo I'll show is the uh, user authenticating with their uh, PIV card. Um, and behind the scene, what's happening is that uh, DFC is checking CRL. It's doing an actual true uh, PKI authentication. Um, it's uh, getting attributes to onboard the user. Um, it's making decisions uh, that is the, the user active and the other uh, CMS. Um, it's also assigning assurance level to this because um, the system can also uh, be configured for federation. So being able to authenticate the FIDO you know, credential once and then being able to do a single sign-on to uh, Office 365 or G Suite or Dropbox, whatever enterprise applications are. And so it's making a decision on level of assurance um, that is the user going to be authorized for that or which which level of assurance it meets, level two or level three. Therefore, the user would have a preference on, on what applications they can access uh, based on policy. Um, and then it's, like I said, onboarding the user because the FIDO has its own life cycle since it's a different system in this uh, case. It doesn't have to be a different system, but, but likelihood because <clears throat> PIV and CAC cards are issued already, uh, this is a, you know, would be a separate sort of installation. Um, and then the other thing it does is the registering uh, and issuance of FIDO2 credential. So that's what you'll see here. Um, so Mark logs in with his PIV card. Um, and so that's why there was no email, nothing was entered, right? It was just simply went straight to, to, to PIV card because Mark said log in with PIV card. Uh, and so Mark enters the pin for the PIV card. Uh, now that what I mentioned last time, the authentication has happened. Mark already has uh, ability to add a FIDO credential. So that's what I was saying here that giving, depending on the configuration, the user can have the option to do drive PIV or, or FIDO2. So Mark checked FIDO2. Mark is entering the pin for the, the YubiKey. Um, if the pin is not already configured, then you would have uh, the prompt where you have to put it in twice, uh, just like you know uh, confirming the pin. But here, the, the pin and the security key existed. So you touch the security key, your FIDO credential is now created. Uh, and now, you know, Mark could do whatever policy allows. It could manage this credential, could use this credential to log in. Uh, it can, you know, go to whatever applications are federated as well and be able to authenticate with this credential and, and get uh, uh, access to it just like you do with the, the PIV credential or OTP or whatever other credentials that were allowed. Um, so Mark is going to log out. Um, and the next what I'll show is uh, actual uh, lifecycle of the FIDO credential, meaning using it to sign in. Uh, if a policy is, allows it, uh, Mark could get additional credentials, uh, maybe because you know you never ever wanna go back to 
uh, being locked out or you know OTP or password. So you may want to add um, you know additional FIDO credential or or another credential. Um, if uh, policy allows, Mark could go in and suspend or revoke their credential too uh, if he loses his uh, YubiKey, for example. Uh, again, these are all policy driven. The the and the lastly you'll see in the demo is that the operator uh, in this case is Carol uh, can suspend or revoke uh, Mark's FIDO uh, credential as well. So so very similar to how you know the 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 PIV works, uh, but primarily again it's that without the CA right. Um, uh, so here, Mark is going to log in. Uh, this was the first thing I mentioned that Mark can sign in with this credential, um, and uh, and and you know, depending on what's federated and what's single sign-on. And the reason I'm not really uh, showing that here is that uh, it could be any IDP, right? You could have Azure, you could have Okta, you could have Ping, whoever it is that there's many IDPs that do single sign-on, that do federation and agencies may have their particular um, vendor of choice. Um, and so so the login would work the same way, right? And then they would federate it to, to whichever application. Um, so here, <clears throat> Mark has the ability to uh, suspend, uh, suspend and, and the, there's a policy here that says you can't just revoke a credential. You have to suspend first, um, and if something is suspended, then you could revoke it. Because once you revoke, there's no turning back, right? You have to get a new credential. Um, <clears throat> so I think, yeah, there's and this this demo I recorded earlier today, and it was not a. Uh, there's no speeding up or anything, it's real live. <laughs> uh, so that's why you see this. So Claire uh, uh, logged in here. And so Claire is has the ability to suspend and revoke Mark's credential. So Claire is gonna suspend it. The reason could be any whatever is defined by the, the issuer, right? Uh, it could be somebody's on a leave, somebody lost their device, uh, any anything that uh, uh, is the, you know, policy can drive that. So Claire suspended Mark's FIDO credential, um, and now Mark tries to log in. Um, it will say that you know this credential is suspended, so Mark cannot log in. Um, at the end, I will, I think, briefly discuss this uh, enterprise attention and and RPID uh, control at the end. Um, so this credential is suspended. Um, now, you know, Claire will go in and reactivate the credential. Um, and so Mark can log in. Um, and then um, uh, last video would be more kind of what happens when you are doing uh, life cycle on the PIV card itself and how it kind of the binding happens and how it relates to the FIDO credential. So, um, and, the, and the other part of it is that there is a, uh, reporting, audit trail, everything on uh, at every front, whether it's the credential itself, whether it's the authentication uh, mechanism or who did what uh, in, in terms of uh, in the system. So there's a signed um, audit trail and, and nice reporting available with it. Um, and also notifications can go out, SMS, so, uh, uh, email notifications. Um, so this is what you see that soon as soon as Claire uh, reactivated the FIDO credential, Mark was able to to log in. So this lastly is the uh, the the DFC binding with the PIV lifecycle. So operator Jim in this case will suspend Mark's PIV card, uh, uh, but because policy allows in this system. Um, that Mark can still continue to use the FIDO credential. Um, and then the next will be that uh, operator will revoke Mark's PIV card um, and uh, policy is defined to check CRL and check user status in the CMS, uh, that if it's revoked, uh, DFC will not allow uh, Mark to 
log in with that uh, credential because it will automatically suspend or revoke the FIDO credential. So Jim logs in with his PIV card. Jim is, as I mentioned, Jim is a uh, uh, operator um, in the system. And this is a different system. This is the CA issuer. And, and so think of, you know, there's US Access, there's, I, you know, uh, DMDC, there's, there's other issuers. So uh, this is kind of that the action is taken on, on the, the PIV card issuing system. Um, so, so this gem will suspend uh, Mark's PIV card. And again, nowadays, I think most vendors do this and, and uh, uh, same in this, our case is that uh, all the journeys, everything is configurable. Um, so it's, it's basically drag and drop um, and that how policy allows and what controls you wanna allow. Um, and who has access to what. Um, so it's it's not, I think of it that CMS has gotten a lot more glorified uh, as a identity management systems compared to, you know, what I remember 10, 12, 15 years ago of, of what CMSs could do. <clears throat> so here, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Mark is just logging in uh, and, like I said, Mark was allowed to log in was because the policy said, uh, if your PIV card is suspended, you can still use your, your drive credential. Now, uh, Jim is going to revoke the PIV card um, and the policy is defined that, um, uh, that if, if the card is revoked, then uh, the FIDO credential also will be uh, suspended uh, or revoked. And so the user is not able to uh, log in. And the user is prompted of these things as well. Uh, and if you're doing federation, um, uh, the, the beauty of it is that every application you try to log in is gonna send you back to this, um, you know, the, the DFC and whichever messaging and however guidance to the user that's, you know, agency would provide, they would see that, right? So it would be customized to, that particular, uh, you know, agency or, or tenant, if you will, um, of what their users see and how they're training their users to be able to use the, the FIDO drive credential. Um, so lastly, what I will mention is that the, 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 the DFC authentication or federated SSO FIDO is now supported uh, whether you're trying to log on to your system um, because you know uh, even Azure AD supports it, uh, same as CBA. Um, you can log into whatever enterprise applications. Uh, there is uh, some vendors already support physical access, um, uh, you know the the readers. Um, so you could use FIDO. Um, uh, as well. Um, so at least it's a step up from <clears throat> using Prox or MyFair or, or uh, uh, you know, um, and I know a lot of in the federal government, obviously there's the uh, PIV authentication uh, using the, um, you know, the CAC certificate on the uh, on the PIV cards, uh, but there's, there's a FIDO uh, option there. And you can also use the FIDO credential for on your phone um, whether it's for Office 365 or other applications, you can tap your YubiKey uh, and uh, it's a nice, you know, simplified interface uh, that you're able to use your FIDO credential uh, across different journeys the user may be taking, uh, different devices the user may have. So I think for me, that's kind of about it, right? So um, I, I didn't want to take so much of your time. So uh, I will open it up to you guys uh, for questions, answers. Pre, thank you for the presentation. There was a few questions in the chat. Um, uh, oh, sure, sorry, I, I did not look at the chat. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you wanna do that, that'd be great, thank you. Sure. Um, Yeah, 
Yeah, so the first question that Todd had, um, so, uh, and I think I can probably just uh, put this here, right? Um, yeah, so, uh, it, you know, have we tested how long the it takes once a, the pivot credential is revoked? So now this is completely dependent on system to system, right? Um, how how often does that system update the CRL? Uh, how often can we ping that system? Uh, now, for example, if we are saying we're for IDP is our system, right? Uh, being the CMS as the issuer, then we use Skim and we have instant uh, availability, right? So it's not there's no delay. It's like if you do some action on uh, the card issuing system, the rest of the systems, whether it's the applications that are federated or the actual um, uh, the drive credentials uh, uh, system, it will instantly sync across the board, right? But since there are systems in the federal government that have been deployed for many, many years, right? Um, then that's why we make it configurable uh, that uh, how, depending on how often their uh, you know status is updated from those systems. And that's how you, and, and one of the things I think uh, maybe, I don't know if you noticed, uh, is that we have ability to tie, I'll go back to that one. Um, I mean, I get the fact that if it's your um, uh, card management system, then ultimately you're the source of truth. You're telling the CA the credentials were both, the CA is just going to follow your command. Yeah. The problem is, you know, we've got over 9 million revoked certificates within the federal PKI, roughly about 220 meg of like CRL data. So yeah. some of our CAs may only publish a CRL once a day. Some may publish every so four hours. I've, so we test, so when we tested, we've seen, we've seen day and we've seen week. So, uh, I mean, so because we did That's some testing. That's what I was curious about. Yeah, yeah, yep. so we did. And, we, yeah, so we did some testing with the CAC uh, as well, and we did some testing with the PIV and uh, in the lab, uh, and we noticed that um, some are actually, you know, we we can see a daily update, and some we're seeing a weekly update, and that's why I said we, so we made it configurable. But uh, and and the other thing I think for us is that. Uh, CRLs, if we detect multiple, we can tie it to a group. If we detect a single one, for example, for I don't know why we would do that, but uh, we could tie it to a user policy. <laughs> so the other, and sorry, I don't want to drag this out, but um, do you have the ability to integrate with other card management systems? So if they perform the action, then the ability to do some kind of a rest call to you to yep. flag that credential to say, yeah, hey, so it's with us. Yep. So the, I so there's three uh, ways, right? But mainly, I would say two. So one is the the API route. Uh, so whether it's you know uh, REST API, the other is the skim route. Um, so there's a skim service running, and you can configure to uh, customize uh, and and hopefully in the future more and more. You know, if you know, notice IDP vendors, they are uh, in you know mainly integrating through skim now and hopefully next generation of card management systems would do the same um, but those uh you know th those those are available um and uh and then the also just the the open id connect uh route as well uh but i think that the open id connect existing cmss don't have um at least at least i'm not aware of any uh, besides us that has it Thanks for entertaining the question. No problem. And also, like I said, if there's any technical uh, deep dive or anything you guys would like to do, I mean, we we can we can be available to to do those things. Um, so I'll ask the next question. Um, Uh, so this is from Richard. Um, so this is uh, saying, okay, compared to certificate revocation, would this lead to proxy with the integrative VAF that check this identity is updated as well? Yeah. Um, so uh, 
that is true as well, right? So if there's a status, so obviously you lose the CRL publishing um, with the, the FIDO, uh, but there's actually more than one way of proxying and checking uh, that the identity is updated. Uh, there was a question from Debbie. Um, cards were terminated because applicants do not perform yet certificate. Yeah, so this is a, a policy question, right? Um, that does the policy require DFC to be terminated if a PIV has been terminated or revoked? Uh, and, and you know, I, and again, I, I think it also depends on if you look at many contractors, there, there are a lot of contractors out there that don't actually have a PIV card. Uh, they're using, you know, OTP or, or uh, a mechanism to, to authenticate. So, so I think this is all a policy driven and, and policy should be assigned to uh, user base, uh, whether it's you know, tied to a group or tied to a uh, individual. Um, and it's also could be level of assurance, what are they accessing? I don't know if that does that answer your question, Debbie, because this, is, this question is actually more of a, a policy on the government side than me. <laughs> Um, so, so policy states that um, you know, there is no policy stating that you have to have a one-to-one -one binding between the, the derived FIDO and the um, PIV card or, or, and or PIV authentication certificate that issued or was used for the identity assurance binding that resulted in the issuance of that derived PIV credential, whether it be X509 or um, this FIDO variant. So the only the only case where that um, is different is a seven day revocation checking, as identified in in uh, 857 and in 79.2. Um, but beyond that, I think it's an agency by agency decision as to whether or not. And, and really, the intent, from my understanding, from this uh, was to allow that credential after issuance after that seven day to really be able to live beyond both the, the card and the certificate used and really then tie back to PIV eligibility. And I think that's what, um, Debbie, I think that's what you were getting at. So I, I think yeah. our question is, or the questions that I've seen, I think there's more than one in the chat is really, you know, can you talk to that PIV eligibility binding versus directly to the certificate? Yeah, and and that's what it was, it's it's configurable um, that way. And so if it's agency, and and the other thing is that we have the ability to directly read the PIV card too, not just the certificate, right? So there's more things that we could do at checks with the the issuer uh, that issue the card as well as the uh, the the card itself. Um, and so there could be things that uh, you know we can configure additional policies. Uh, that are kind of beyond what you saw today. Uh, but again, I think that's a, like you mentioned, uh, Brian, that it's an agency sort of decision um, and then the software would be configurable. Okay. Um, and then the next question um, from Babu is the, the security side. So <clears throat> um, I, I think if you look at, <clears throat> from the portal perspective or any any system perspective, right? That you have everything is tokenized uh, from end to end. So being from from the portal back to the, the service, <clears throat> everything has to hit a gateway. Uh, and uh, and so every whether it's a service, whether it's a endpoint, um, everything will have a token. Um, and so you're you're doing TLS sessions over that. Um, so there's no passwords involved anywhere. Uh, the databases are encrypted, uh, and those encryption keys can be in HSM. Um, and the uh, uh, all the services. So this is more of a microservice platform. So uh, it's not 
multiple applications put together. So all the microservices uh, themselves are communicating over uh, OpenID Connect session or REST API, and all of that is also tokenized. Um, and any key material, whether it's, let's say we're talking about a uh, uh, PIV drive, for example, or PIV card, right? Those keys live in the HSM, so, so HSMs are the ones that diversify keys. So it's the usual, uh, you have the security of what you deal with PIV and CAC, um, as well as what you deal in the cloud. Um, so it's a combination of both uh, things combined in this. Does that, uh, uh, Bagur, does that answer your question? Okay. <clears throat> um, so this, uh, Debbie had another question. Um, if DFC is to be suspended before termination, does this rule apply if the PIV uh, was revoked, uh, thus terminating DFC without suspension first occurring? I, again, I think that's a configuration, right? That if the rule says uh, if a PIV card is revoked, uh, suspend the FIDO drive for let's say X number of hours before revoking it or X number of days, uh, or it can instantly revoke it. The good thing about the FIDO credential is that it's easy to get it, right? Um, compared to re-getting your PIV card. Um, but it's, it's all configurable that uh, you know, do you want to suspend and then maybe have an operator go in and revoke it? Um, so the operator get notification and the operator will go in and say, okay, these credentials have been suspended for X number of days. I'm going to revoke it now. Once a credential is suspended, the user can't use it. <clears throat> um, I hope that answers your question. Um, and then Mark had a, a question about the, the site and building access. Um, so I'm not going to name vendors. So I know about three vendors, um, and and I know uh, Mark and you know Xtech has has readers as well, right? Um, so that are doing FIDO uh, for the the uh, physical access, um, and uh, it's you know I think we could maybe talk offline, but it's basically uh, the same vendors kind of are doing the the PIV card today as well, right? Um, and maybe XTEC also has plans to have a, uh, a FIDO supported on the uh, your readers. <clears throat> uh, does Mark, do you have any, do you want to add anything to that or? Uh, no, thank you for that. That answers the question uh, at the moment. Appreciate okay. it. Yep. Um, and then Wendy had a question. Um, yeah, so again, that's why I said is the, the the binding between sort of the DFC and the PIV, it's all going to be dependent on what is uh, policy of that agency, right? Uh, or the issuer mainly, because obviously if, if a US access is doing it, for example, it may be that uh, they have a broader policy across the board uh, but if agency has their own setup, uh, they may have uh, particular ties to level of assurance or PIV eligibility versus not eligibility. So it's all, well, you know, again, can be sort of configurable. Uh, and, 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 and also it's what attributes and what you're tying to, right, um, is also uh, configurable. For this demo is that we're just matching what we needed um, or binding to what we needed to to onboard and lifecycle manage the user in the new system without the user having to manually enroll or somebody having to enroll the user. It was more automating the process. <clears throat> and and that's the other thing is in this, we, we revoked credentials, but if your PIV card was revoked, we didn't revoke the user because it could be that the user is getting a new PIV card or it's that you know the user left 
uh, and a operator has to come in and revoke uh, uh, the, the the user. Um, so Richard had a question: Is there any need current hardware-based token generator at all uh, in the future? This is a a I think maybe I'll let David answer this. Is that they so it they are I mean obviously you know iPhone or, or Android okay there's a FIDO sport for example but from a security standpoint um, especially if you look at that a issuer wants to make sure that only approved authenticators are allowed on the network, not just you pick up authenticator from, you know, a, a Chinese manufacturer or somewhere else and be able to use it. Just like today's PIV cards have secure channel keys, right? And only the ones that are come from a trusted factory could actually be provisioned and issued. Same thing applies here. So when in a Ubico case that there can be a enterprise attention certificate that is particular to coming out of the factory, uh, that the system would verify before allowing that uh, key to be actually provisioned. Uh, there's RPIDs uh, that would be controlled so you know exactly which applications are allowed to use that key. Um, <clears throat> and again, you know, whether it's it's a hardware authenticator, obviously in this case we're talking about a key, uh, but you know, uh, form factors can vary. Uh, but there is a, to us that, there is a security uh, advantage of having to use a uh, you know hardware authenticator. I don't know if David uh, Maples, if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, um, you know, um, really, like you said, it comes down to purpose-built uh, hardware versus a environment or a platform that can be used for multiple different services without the assurance, uh, same security assurances. And really in the end of the day, uh, regardless of what solution you go with, you want to ensure that you're using a strong platform for performing any sort of operation, be it from the more most modern FIDO to the very basic mm -hmm. one-time passwords. Uh, without that assurance, uh, you're not going to be able to have trust that you, everything is being done in a matter that is both compliant and secure. And yep. at the end of the day, uh, we need to have support for every level because there are legacy solutions out there that will never support modern authentication, regardless of how secure it is. And those need to be secured with an option better than the password. Yep. And it's primarily you know, if, if identity is the sort of the one of the primary uh, pillars for, for zero trust, then being able to control where your credentials live and how you're able to manage it is very important. Uh, and so, I mean, I can go a lot deeper into how we can secure these things uh, or any, you know, not just us, any, any, any vendor could, um, but, um, but there is, this is there are reasons why you know if you're doing only level one or two i would say okay yes you can use mobile but anytime you want to get to a more secure uh then you do need the the hardware authenticator and also the level of the hardware authenticator is important um because you know even even a lot of the the keys we use from yubico is it's there's they're fit certified um so you can use them for uh, drive to PIV as well as uh, uh, FIDO2. <clears throat> um, so Steve had a question. Um, is there any notification protocol to relying parties using federation? Uh, yeah. So uh, if it's federation, first of all, if, if a credential is going to be revoked or suspended or something, the user is not going to be able to log in. Now, depending on that application, uh, there are like, let's take the example of Microsoft Azure, right? There's uh, interfaces for Skim, there's interfaces for OpenID Connect, uh, and, and you know, in a lot of cases, if you have my Azure AD as your IDP, you wanna continue using it, right? So, <clears throat> so there's a real time communication of the status of what's happening with the user and the credentials. Uh, now, there are, you know, if there's a legacy application or so, I can't say it's 100% across the board, but uh, pretty much every enterprise grade application um, you can, uh, uh, and also 
the thing is that if you do federate with OpenID Connect uh, or SAML, but OpenID Connect especially is in the header, you'll get a return back why the authentication failed, right? So the application will be aware of why the user could not uh, log in. And then at that point, <clears throat> they could decide if there's alternative or not, right? Uh, that's all the, the policy driven on that application side. Um, and I think, yeah, Brut, so yeah, uh, this vulnerability management, yeah, we have completely, my background is DOD. So we, we uh, do have a lot of the, the monitoring and security in place. And uh, then Steve had another question about looking at Yubico PIV uh, or just fight. Yeah, so I think one of the, in the demo, um, you know, we didn't go through it, but the Mark Wahlberg had the option to issue a drive to PIV uh, or could be a straight up YubiKey PIV, right? Um, uh, so it's not just the, the process and policies, everything can be the same um, and it can apply to YubiKey PIV as well um, or any, any drive to PIV. And so you have advantages to that, like for example, Microsoft now supports CBA authentication, right? So uh, you can log on to the system with CBA, you could do Microsoft with CBA, and you can still do FIDO2 for other third-party applications. Um, for us, it's it's being able to issue credentials, being able to authenticate users, uh, being able to talk to other enterprise applications, uh, uh, so it's more frictionless for the user uh, is always the, the the goal and 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 what we have built. Uh, so it's an, it's it's pretty pretty standard and open these days. Um, hopefully, I think that's all the questions. Uh, are there any other questions or anything that I can answer? Thank you, Gurpri. Thank you to the Improve ID and Yubico teams for your presentation. Um, any, we're going to uh, move on now to our other working group topics. If there's any of you that want to jump off now, uh, you're, you're welcome to. Thank you.